Welcome to lecture 5G concepts in deflection routers. We already learned about a specific category of network on chip routers known as deflection routers. We initially learned about completely bufferless deflection routers and then later we learned about minimally buffered deflection routers or side buffered deflection routers. So today with this background that we learned in the last two videos, we will try to understand certain concepts just like the tutorial what we had in the previous weeks. Let us go into today's tutorial session. So the first set of question is all about match the following. So on the left side in set A, you have been given with names of routers. One is chipper, virtual channel router, slider, D-bar and then min bd router so we learned about the internal working and the operational principles of all these five deflection routers and some properties of uh, deflection routers are given silver flate late injection credit based flow control golden placket and quadrant routing is been given so let us try to see what is the perfect matching in this case so in this given match the following we have been given with five different types of routers and some properties associated with them only if you are very thorough and clear about how the internals of these routers are what is operational principles then only you will be able to correlate with the right match so we will take a quick summary of each of these routers and try to understand these concepts which will help us to perform the right match okay so the first one is about chipper so this is the general structure of a chipper router where you have packets coming from north east south and west are there and the packet should be ejected and then the new packet should be injected into the free slots and then you have the permutation deflection network so what is been happening in the case of this in chipper is we will use a concept known as golden packet which will determine which is that packet which will never be deflected so the golden packet always will get its preferred port so chipper is the correct answer is golden packet now the next one is known as virtual channel router so why the conventional routers are from the input port you have some buffers in which the packets will sit we learned that when we introduce the concept of network on chip and in the bufferless routers we are trying to get rid of that so once you are inside a buffer your movement to the next router depends upon a feedback from them so there is a handshaking mechanism between every pair of adjacent routers and they ex basically exchange credit based flow control. So flow control is nothing but depending upon the availability of buffers in the downstream router we should be able to move the packets. So virtual channel router is focusing on credit based flow control. Now we are going to talk about a concept known as uh, slider. So in slider we have side buffers there is no buffer in the input. So we have side buffers and this is the structure in which you use. So typically in the case of a chipper router, we have the inject unit and the eject unit early in the pipeline. So first you do the inject and eject and then we are going to work with the concept of PDN, the permutation deflection network. Whereas the concept of slider is anyway it is going for a deflection. So why can't you consider this particular mechanism wherein you are going to inject little late. So this is called the injection mechanism, late injection mechanism. So slider work with the concept of late injection. So in a conventional deflection router like a chipper, here it is early injection and early ejection. Whereas if you look at the structure of the slider router that is there here, you see that injection is the last stage. So if at all there is any port that is available, then you are going to inject into that. Now the fourth one is known as D-bar. So let us try to see what happens in D-bar. So our initial configuration all has been done. Chipper is with the golden packet. Virtual channel router is credit based flow control. Slider is late inject. And now we talk about D-bar. So in D-bar, it's a slightly advanced version of slider. We already learned that. Before going into PDN, you require two things. One is a priority. Second one is preferred port. So the preferred port is being determined by a mechanism known as quadrant routing, which will provide the output vector. So D-bar is connected to quadrant routing mechanism and the last one is known as MinBD router. So in the case of MinBD router, apart from the golden packet scheme that we see in chipper, uh, so there, is a, there exists only one golden packet in the entire NOC. So how do you resolve ties of packets that are coming 
within a single router. So you introduce a second level of priority. The first level of priority is golden packet, which we see in chipper. How do you determine or how do you distinguish between new non-golden packet? So we have the concept of silver fleet. So this is the proper matching that we are doing with respect to the various motors. So in short, what we see, chipper uses the concept of golden packet for prioritization. Virtual channel router make use of credit based flow control for movement of packets from one router to another. Slider uses the concept of late injection where newly created packets are injected into the router pipeline only after port allocation is done and based upon the availability of empty slots you inject packets into that. D bar make use of a quadrant routing concept which will create output vectors and that is being fed into PDN in order to determine the port allocation and min BD router have one more level of fleet prioritization scheme apart from golden packet, non golden packets are been resolved by the concept of silver fleets. So in this way, this matching is being done. So please do understand in this particular scenario, we will be able to perform the matching with respect to some properties or characteristics of deflection routers only if we are thorough with the internal working, the terminologies that are being used. So kindly go through the the functioning, the working of these routers in order to get a deeper grip on it to solve questions like this. So next we are going for some true or false statements. So BLESS router uses parallel port allocation logic, BLESS router age based prioritization or sorting of packets. So let us take one by one what is the case. So these are the statements that are being given. Now let us see what is that is going to be there in each of these case. So BLESS router uses parallel port allocation logic. We have to see that BLESS is bufferless technique and there we are going to have a fleet ranking and a sequential port allocation logic is being used. So it is not a parallel port allocation logic, it is a sequential port allocation logic. Now BLESS router uses age based sorting of packets. So first you are going to sort the packets based upon something, here age is being used, so age based sorting happens. So that is correct. So it uses age based sorting of packets and then you use a sequential port allocation logic based upon the priority that you have. Now in chipper uses silver fleet scheme that is what we have seen there. So chipper basically use golden packet in the previous match the following we have seen and then it is a min BD that make use of the concept of silver. So chipper uses silver fleet scheme for fleet prioritization. This is a wrong statement. Now min BD uses late injection to reduce channel wastage. So the concept of late injection is used in sliders. So the slider, the, the expansion of slider is smart late injection deflection routers. So the concept of late injection is not in min BD, but they are in slider. So this statement is also false. Now D bar uses hopes to destination scheme for fleet prioritization. Yes, so your quadrant routing scheme and uh, uh, for fleet prioritization, it is a priority vector that is being used. So you are going to partition packets into various categories based upon how many hopes exist from the current router to the destination. So hopes to destination is the uh, fleet prioritization mechanism. So that is true and slider can operate at restricted and unrestricted injection. So we know that the slider, we have injection of packets into the slider pipeline that is the last stage in the router pipeline. And sometimes we go for restricted injection. So the restricted injection means we inject only if the corresponding port is available. Unrestricted injection means we are going to work on it only if uh, th there are a lot many packets waiting in the buffer and then we are not really looking forward whether the output port that is available is matching or not. So this is also going to be true. So just to summarize, this is false. The first one, BLESS router uses parallel port allocation logic is false, BLESS router uses age based sorting of packets. So uses age based sorting of packets that is true. Chipper uses silver fleet scheme for fleet prioritization false. Chipper use only golden. Min BD uses late injection to reduce channel wastage that is false. Late injection is a concept of slider. D bar uses hopes to destination scheme for fleet prioritization that is true. And slider can operate at restricted and unrestricted injection that is also true. So in this way we, by knowing the working, we are able to say whether the statements are true or false. Now let us go into a problem wherein I am going to talk about a set of packets arriving a particular router. So here the statement goes, we are talking about a 4 by 4 NOC with chipper routers and we the preferred port is being chosen by XY routing. So when packets reach, how do I 
find out what is my preferred port the conventional xy routing technique is been applied to know what is a preferred port that doesn't mean that packet will go in that particular port itself that is my demand as per xy routing whatever is the output port that i demand that's my requirement i wanted to go in that now consider the case of four packets that are going to reach router number 5 so you have to be very familiar with the layout the bottom left is a 4 by 4 noc so the routers are numbered from 0 to 15 it start with 0 on the bottom left and 15 on the top right so we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 like that that is a sequence in which the routers are been numbered now i am giving the details of some packets so what are the details of the packet what all things i am giving packet number whether the packet is golden or not through which input port the packet is coming to router number 5 what is the source what is the destination so packet p1 it is not golden it comes through the south input port source was router number 1 and destination is router number 13 so similarly p2 p3 p4 are defined so i am getting four packets that are considering four packet that reach router number 4 so p2 is my golden because the second field will tell whether it's golden or not there exists only one golden packet so in this case p1 it is not golden p3 not golden and p4 also is not golden now the question is if we are using chipper routers and this is going to talk about router number 5 what is the output port allocated to each of these packets at router number 5 and we know that chipper works with golden packet so golden packet will get its preferred port when there is a tie for a non golden packet the lower number router will win okay so we will go and deal with that so let's try to understand what is been done so this is your 4 by 4 mesh noc this is the order in which the routers are numbered 0 to 15 so this is the standard ordering 0 on bottom left and 15 on top right and we are going to talk about chipper routers and the peculiarity of chipper router is the packets coming from north east south and west they are been given like this and then first you you are trying to eject the packets that are there so anything is meant for the local router you are going to eject any newly created packet are going to be injected now where i am going to inject it depends upon which of these output ports are really free so the newly injected packet will go into that particular port and this is the port allocation logic the pdn we have already seen in the previous week video but again we will come back to it and it is based upon port allocation these packets are going to get some ports here here the peculiarity is this is going to be north south and this is going to be east west now let us try to see how it has been done so you have to understand first thing is for a permutation deflection network the pairing of the ports so we call it as arbiter 1 and this is arbiter 2 they are in the first level arbiter 3 and arbiter 4 that is in the second level so the flit that has been coming from after the eject you know that there is an eject state and an inject state so inject and eject is there that is previously in the router pipeline that what we have seen now we are going to have a zoomed version of what happens inside this permutation deflection network so a packet coming from north and a packet coming from east they are coupled together similarly packet coming from south and packet coming from west they are coupled together and now between the pair of packets that are coming to a single arbiter we will try to see which of them are golden so the golden will get the preferred next arbiter the other one will get so what if there is a case of two non golden flits comes so that is a case of uh, the non golden flits are going to be given based upon the router number so that's the way how the tie breaker thing is been done so the tie breaking is done based upon that principle only so what we have seen this when there is a tie for non golden packets lower router number win that is the mechanism by which we have worked upon it now let us see the packets how they are coming so we have p1 p1 is coming from south so where is p1 so this is the router under consideration p1 is coming from 1 it is all the way going to 13 that is the direction of p1 so it enters router 5 through the south input port so essentially you have your p1 it is not golden entering through south and it is from 1 it is supposed to go to 13 that is my requirement now what about p2 so p2 is golden packet and uh, p2 is coming from 4 and it is going to 3 this is the preferred direction that it wants that is why it is mentioned that p2 is coming through 
the west input port. So, ideally my P2 should come through west, that is the direction that is been given through the west input port it is coming. So, P1 and P2 are going to reach the input of this arbiter. So, only if you know the structure of arbiter, the structure of PDN which are coupled together, then only you will be able to do. Now, let us go to P3. P3 is coming from local. So, it is neither coming from north nor coming from east. It is coming from local. Let us try to keep P3 for a while. Let us see what happens for P4. P4 is coming from east. Okay. So, if P4 is coming from east, that means I do have a packet coming from south that is my P1. I do have a packet coming from west that is P2 and I do have a packet that is coming from east that is P4. So, the only slot that is empty out of this is my north. So, the locally injected packet that is your P3 which is injected from 5 itself. So, it is a locally created packet that wanted to go to router number 10. So, 10 is this router. So, this is the preferred direction in which it goes. And whereas, uh, so this is the P2 and this is the case of P3 and then P4 is coming from 6 and it is trying to look forward for 9. So, this is the status of P4. Now, if you look into that, so P3 will obviously come through the input of N. So, after the eject and inject state, P3 will be there in this line. That is what is been shown. Even though it is from local, it comes through N. Why it is coming to N? Because N is that port which is now empty. And obviously, P4 is coming through L. So, the first stage of solving this problem is trying to understand out of these four packets that is been coming, which packet come to which input port. So, that is clearly given in this case. Now, let us try to arbitrate between them. So, what is the kind of arbitration that you are going to do? Your N and E, so which is the golden packet in this case? As mentioned, P2 is golden. And how do you tie break between two non-golden? So, P3 and P4 both are non-golden. So, how do you resolve tie between them? The lower number is been given the higher priority. So, that is the way how your initial steps are been mentioned. So, where did we mention that? That is the lower number is getting higher priority. So, when there is a tie for a non-golden packet, lower router number will win. So, P1 is having higher priority than P2 or than P3 than P4 like that. So, in this P2 is golden. So, you remove that. So, the priority order is going to be P1 is having higher priority than P3, which in turn is having higher priority than P4. So, this is the tie breaking rule. Okay. So, let us go and then figure it out how it has been done. So, in this case P3 is having higher preference. Now, when between P1 and P2, we already have P2 that is golden. So, P2 is going to win. Now, look at where they wanted to go. What is their preferred port? Let us try to run no one from P1. So, P1 wanted to go from 1 to 13. As per XY routing, P1 is looking forward for north output port. And what about P2? P2 wanted to go from 4 to 3. So, this is the direction of P2. So, P2 is coming from west. P2 is looking for an east port. So, that is the output requirement that we have as per XY routing. Now, coming to P3, P3 is locally created. So, P3 wanted to go from 5, it wanted to go to 10 as per XY routing. So, P3 is also looking forward for an east port, whereas P4, P4 is coming from 6 and it is looking forward for 9. So, as per XY routing, that is north. So, if you look at this case, you can know that there are two competitors for north. So, who are the one who are competing for north? So, one is your P1 and the other is P4. They are competing for north and who are competing for east? So, one is P2 which is obviously golden. The other one is going to be P3. So, these are the kind of output port, the preferred output ports for these four packets. So, let us try to understand what we have done in this case. We have been given with four packets, its properties like what is its input, through which input port it is coming, what is the source, what is the destination, whether it is golden or not. This much details are already given. So, once this much details are there, then you try to work it out based upon through which input of the permutation deflection network, these packets are reaching the PDN. So, we have done up to that stage now. So, now we have a clear idea that your P1 and P2 are coupled at arbiter number 2, that is the bottom left arbiter, 
whereas your p3 and p4 are coupled at arbiter number 1 that's a top left arbiter and now between two of now we have two packets one of them will go to arbiter 3 and one will go to arbiter 4 so there are two packets reaching the input of arbiter 1 one will go to arbiter 3 one will go to arbiter 4 similarly we have two packets in the input of arbiter 2 one to be gone for 3 and other one to be gone for 4 so in both these arbiters we find out which is having higher priority one so let us try to work it out so first let us take this p3 and p4 p3 and p4 is coming p3 wanted to go to east and p4 wanted to go to north so in this case not a problem p3 will be the winner so p3 will come here because p3 he is having higher priority so i will not ask p4 what you want where p3 is asking p3 wanted to go to east output port that means this is your arbiter 3 and this is your arbiter 4 so this is arbiter 1 and arbiter 2 so from arbiter 1 p3 will move to arbiter 4 because p3's requirement is go to east and p3 win over p4 because of the non golden tie breaker so once p3 come here p4 will automatically go into this okay now what we have is we have the second level this one the arbiter number 2 where you have p1 and p2 so here the question is p1 is golden so where p1 wanted to go p1 wanted to go to east so in this case your p p2 p2 wanted to go to east so p2 being the golden flit will directly go into east because this arbiter will take you to the east output so now p2 and p3 those who wanted to go to east will reach there so automatically your p1 i am not asking what port p1 wants p1 will reach here okay so this is the way how so now the packets that are there in the input of a arbiter a1 and arbiter a2 now have reached inputs of arbiter a3 and a4 one level of rearrangement happened now let us take what happens here now p1 and p4 are going to combine. what is the peculiarity of p1 and p4 both are non-golden both are non-golden hat is having priority so p1 is having higher priority than p4 so what is p1 requesting for p1 is requesting for north so p1 will come out automatically your p4 has to take south there is no other choice for it similarly when you have p2 and p3 p2 and p3 both are combusting but p2 is golden so what is p2 requesting for east so p2 get east and p3 get west so what is the port allocation that has been done packet p1 requested so let us see try to understand what they requested for and what they got so p1 we know that p1 requested for north and p1 got also north so p1 is happy now what about p4 p4 requested for north and what it got it got south so it got deflected it has to go out in the opposite direction so the packet p4 is deflected by chipper since there is no storage now what is the requirement of p2 p2 is looking forward for east it is golden it got east itself obviously golden will get its preferred port so p2 is happy p3 is also requesting for east but then p3 got west so what we see that in this case you are packet p1 and packet p2 they both got their preferred ports so we call them they are productively routed whereas packet p4 and p3 they are deflected so in this way we solve this problem so what is the question what are the output ports that are being assigned so this you, you will be able to solve this problem only if you know what is the pipeline of the chipper router what happens for eject and inject and depending on what is been ejected out what is the new packet that is been going in where which port that particular packet enters and then what is the kind of input that is coming to the arbiters 1 2 and then later in second stage called 3 and 4 and accordingly based on golden and tiebreaker role of non golden so there is no other priority scheme only golden is there all others are non golden and there is a mechanism by which how do you arbitrate between two non golden flits so in this case we are able to find out the way what are the ports that are being assigned to these four packets now let us go into a min bd router this also the same question is being given so what you see there is exactly the same we have p1 that is been given p2 p3 and p4 
what is the output port allocated to each of these packets or router 5 if p4 is a silver fluid so now we are going to tell about what is the uh, the status of p4 so p4 is silver so p2 is already golden so in the case of a min bd router you have golden as well as silver so it's a two level priority mechanism p4 is the silver one now how do you tie break when there is a tie for non golden non silver fluid packets it is always the lower router number will win and same is applicable at the buffer reject also so there can be tie at port allocation there can be tie at the buffer reject also let us try to understand in what way this is different so in this case the concepts are still the same but there is a difference we are now talking about min bd router so again this is my router number 5 and then we have packets coming from all the four directions okay so in the case of a min bd router what happens if a packet is to be ejected that is been removed so we have a dual ejection that means if there are two packets to be ejected min bd will remove both of them and then we are going into a redirection into the side buffer that is been happening and then newly created packets are injected here and then there is a silver fluid concepts once you add the silver status so now both silver status and golden status will be reflected on the packet and then you have your pdn the pdn structure is same and at the end of that from among the set so this is the difference from among the set of fluids that are been deflected out or that got non productive port after the pdn again you try to remove some of them to be kept in the side buffer so that is the extra component that you have in the min bd router so let us try to solve this problem so we already know that what is a kind of an arbitration mechanism that is been used and then your p4 is going to be silver so p2 is golden so this is my golden and p4 is going to be the silver now let us try to see how the arbitration process is done in this case so we know that you have what are the ports that is been coming so p3 and p4 is coming together and uh, where p3 wanted to go so that's the kind of uh, requirement that we will tell so the requirement of p3 is p3 wanted to go from 5 to 10 and it's xy routing so p3 wanted to go in east direction so that is the east is my requirement and what about p4 like what we have seen 6 to 9 so p4 wanted actually north so that is the way in which the requirement comes and then the p1 and p2 what is the status for p1 so p1 is moving from 1 to 13 so p1 also wanted north and p2 is your golden one that's moving from 4 to 3 and that is also requiring for an east port now try to resolve so these are the arbiter numbers that we have so we have arbiter 1 arbiter 2 arbiter 3 and arbiter 4 we have seen in the previous case there ex so p3 and p4 are going to be there so now in this case who is having higher priority so we have a non fluid non silver non golden packet and in this case p4 is your silver fluid so silver fluid wins p4 wanted to go to north so p4 obviously will come here and the p3 is going to be here that is the way how tie breaking is done in the arbiter number 2 we have a non silver non golden that is your p1 is going to compete with your golden fleet and the p2 wanted to go to east so p2 comes here and your p1 is going to be there so there is absolutely no difference in this case even though this guy is silver uh, this is same as what we have seen it in chipper now p1 and p4 are going to work with so what is the peculiarity of p1 as well as p4 so we have to understand in this case p1 is a non silver non golden packet whereas p4 is silver so you are going to get p4 that is coming so please understand you have p1 and p4 p1 and p4 p4 is silver and p1 is non golden non silver so p4 have higher priority than your p1 so in this case since both of them want north p4 is having higher preference so p4 goes to north and then your p1 automatically is routed out but to south so what was the requirement and what it got so both want north p1 got p4 got north and p1 got south so that is the difference that you see here now coming to p2 and p3 p2 is golden so p2 will obviously get its east output port and the p3 will get here so both have the requirement of east p2 golden p2 got east and the other guy will get west so this is the port allocation that is been done so two of them are in the productive direction so you can see that 
P4 got its productive direction and P2 also got its productive direction. Both of them got the pot that it has been requested for. The other two are being deflected. Now, let us try to see what happens in this deflection. So, now P1 and P3 both will reach the buffer eject. So, we have two candidates that is P1 and P3 that is there in the buffer eject unit. So, the P4 and P2 will get productive direction. I am not going to touch them. Now, P1 and P3, there is a tie breaker. One of them can be put into side buffer. So, in this case, there is a both are non golden, non silver. So, the lower one will win. So, P1 is having higher priority. So, what we do is P1 rather than pushing P1 into the south output port, this P1 is going to be side buffered and it will try its luck in the subsequent cycle by coming re injection. Whereas, P3 will be deflected. So, overall if you look into this, we can see that your P2 that is golden that will get east output port, the P4 that is silver that got the north output port, P1 as well as P3. So, if you look at this, you have P1 and P3 that is been there, which are candidates for buffer reject based upon tie breaker. So, P1 is been side buffered. P3 will lose there also. So, P3 has to go all the way to the west output port. So, P3 is getting deflected. So, in this way, we can see that we took up the same set of packets, one with a chipper router, the other with min BD routers, and then we are trying to see how the movement of packets happen. So, this priority mechanism, the golden packet, the silver flit, and the tie breaker at the port allocation or PDN unit as well as the buffer eject unit, they will determine which all packets will go out in a deflected way and which all packets will get a chance to get side buffered. So, I hope today's this special session on working out with the design cases of various packets, understanding of your chipper and min BD router is more clear. So, with this we come to the end of today's session, this video, try to practice this as much as you can with various combination of packets and various combination of priority golden and silver mechanisms. I am sure with this you will be in a position to get a good grip and understanding on deflection routers, both bufferless deflection routers as well as minimally buffered deflection routers. So, we conclude this lecture. Thank you.